uh, my name is Varinder and uh, welcome you to my YouTube channel Cloud Ninja. So in this video we will study about uh, Amazon VPC uh, which full form is Virtual Private Cloud or uh, it also says that how we do the networking in the AWS Cloud. So without wasting much time uh, let's try to understand what Amazon VPC is a, basically a virtual private cloud so you can say that uh, you know, it is a cloud within the cloud because we are already using the AWS cloud services. We have subscribed for that. So it is like within the AWS cloud, we are we are we are creating a particular logical entity within the AWS cloud or boundary for the resources which will be using within the AWS cloud. So VPC is a virtual network dedicated to your AWS account, and uh, as I said, it is a logically isolated from the all other virtual networks which will be creating in AWS Cloud or maybe other people or other uh, organizations which you are using. And you will be able to launch your AWS resources such as Amazon EC2 into the VPC so that you can really use that. So in more simple terms if I talk about it is your network, your uh, logical network which you have created within the, uh, within the AWS and uh, you can design it as per your requirement or your business need and uh, the best thing is that uh, like the feature of uh, of cloud computing that you are not paying any kind of upfront cost onto the hardware you are just subscribed to this service uh, and, and log into the AWS console and you can subscribe for this service and you can start uh, you know using this creating the different rules into that create subnets into that so all these things we can do within the VPC without uh, spending any money on to the hardware and you'll be able to control that okay which kind of resources need internet access which not so all those things which we can create within the VPC the other thing is that uh, we can add resources into that uh, like you can see on the right hand side there are different resources maybe database servers or your uh, or your storage devices so all these things we can create within the VPC and uh, we can add networks into the VPC that okay which uh, device will go to the which part of the network and then we can create different subnets into that and we can further uh, do the isolation by doing the subnetting for uh, maybe we want different subnets for the uh, development and different subnets for the staging servers. So all these things we'll be able to do in a VPC. Basically, uh, you know, what the routing does is the uh, routing will just uh, forward your packet uh, to the destination where you want to. And uh, let's try to understand before actually digging deep into the uh, this uh, routing. What are the core concepts of uh, VPC? So before uh, building up the VPC, we really need to understand that okay, what is the address range? How big our uh, network should be depending on the resources which you'll be using so we need to define or think about that that okay what kind of address range we should be choosing because otherwise uh, you'll be in a continuous loop uh, or maybe a shortage of addresses tomorrow when your network will expand so we need to carefully uh, plan the address range and then uh, we can set up the subnets and uh, depending on different resources or the network we are having that okay how many web servers we are having, how many database services we are having, how many, uh, you know, staging servers we have, uh, you know, if we have any kind of disaster recovery site. So depending on all that, we need to think about that, okay, how many subnets we require and according to that, we really need to uh, do the uh, subnetting for the, for the IP address range which we have chosen. The third thing is we really need to define the routes because once the subnets are defined, availability zones are defined, we we want the networking to happen. We want the resources should be able to access uh, across the different subnets or across the different networks. So that is done by the routing. So once the routing is done, we need to authorize the traffic. Uh, whether we want the instance from this particular subnet should be communicate to all the instances as in other subnet or should be able to communicate with these single instances. So all those things we can create by authorizing traffic or creating a uh, ACLs or network uh, access control list. So the first thing is let's try with a small example. Choosing an address range, let's say we have chosen at this particular address range 
1.0.0.0/16. In the second step, uh, you'll be creating uh, subnets and availability zones. You can see that uh, we created three uh, availability zones or three subnets. Uh, basically, the different availability zones and each availability zone we created one subnet for the fault tolerance or high availability. In case this goes down, this is there to provide the services or to run the business. So. EU West 1A, EU West 1B, and EU 1 West C. There are the three availability zones within the Oregon region. And uh, once we have created that, we really need uh, these resources to communicate with each other. So this is just the IP address, a different IP address range have uh, taken. So you can you actually need to create route table for this uh, range only because this is our main range and we want. Uh, the subnets which are within the range only to communicate. So don't get confused with that. Uh, so there are some of the core concepts about networking because uh, routing is actually a heart of the networking because if if proper routing is not there, the resources will not be able to talk to our subnets and uh, it will defy the purpose of networking for which we have created a VPC basically. So, route table in a VPC will be telling that, okay, which packets will be there, uh, going where, that the packets should go from EU West 1A to West 1B or 1C, or 1C wants packet to 1A only, not to the 1B. So, all these things we can create with the help of route tables and also with the uh, access list. And uh, whenever we create a VPC, we need to remember that it creates a default route uh, with itself. And uh, we'll see in the next example that how default route helps. And uh, we need to basically create custom rules when we have to uh, forward the traffic to some uh, other subnets. So really to authorize the traffic, uh, like to access, uh, have the control of the resources that which uh, resource should be accessing which. We can authorize the traffic, like with the help of example, you can say that you have a couple of database servers and web servers. You only want that only web servers should be able to communicate to the internet. You can create uh, rules within that. And you want that that database server should not be communicated to the internet. So this isolation you can create by creating a network access list or security groups. So let's see in uh, a bit detail that uh, what are route tables and uh, what is the default route which is created within the when you create a VPC? So there are the three main things which you need to understand. Uh, see the diagram on to the right hand side that this is the uh, AWS region and within the region, uh, let's say this is the IP address range. We have created like the first step when we create a VPC and then we created two subnets. Uh, one is public subnet and one is subnet for the VPN traffic only. So you can see that this is private IPv4 and uh, this is for uh, this particular private. Now the thing is, uh, you know, really for the traffic uh, that this particular public subnet needs to talk to the uh, internet, in that case we, we should, you know, we should tell this particular subnet that really in order to talk to the devices onto the internet or to get through this uh, VPC because VPC is again isolation and if we want that the traffic for this subnet should be going to the internet then we need to create a route for that. So here, uh, you know, this is the main uh, route table we can say that the default route table which is created which says that any traffic which is destined for this which is the address name for our VPC should be local only means it is, should be within the VPC only. Now if we want that this traffic should go outside we need to uh, provide a path to this particular uh, traffic to the internet gateway which will forward the packet to the outside the VPC. So this is what we are saying, we have created a custom route table that okay for this particular traffic just go to the local or VPC will handle that. Any traffic which is other than this less 0 .0, dot slash 0 should be going to the internet gateway. Now the second thing is route table for the NAT devices. We'll uh, get into detail about the NAT devices in our subsequent videos. So NAT devices basically, let's say you have uh, you know a couple of devices in uh, in this particular subnet, and you want that these devices should be able to connect to the internet, but from the internet, no one should be able to connect the devices in in this particular subnet. 
So in that case, you can create a NAT instance or a NAT device, which uh, with the help of which you will be able to forward the traffic. Let's say this is a NAT device. So this particular traffic will be forwarded to the NAT device, and the NAT device will forward the traffic to the internet. Now again, when the devices from the internet will come back for the query to be forwarded over here, so they will be contacting with the NAT device only, and then NAT device forwards the traffic depending on the port number through which was initiated. The third thing is route table for the virtual private gateway. So this is a typical corporate scenario. Let's say you have a couple of resources within the AWS uh, Amazon Cloud, and you have a corporate office as well. So Really, in order to forward the packets from your AWS to the corporate network or vice versa, you need to create a virtual private gateway. What it will do is, it will it is telling the subnet that okay, if you want to go for this particular IP address, just go to the VPC. But if any traffic is other than this, you need to go to the VGW, which is our virtual private gateway. So in that case, uh, the traffic will be forwarded to the virtual gateway and then uh, to the uh, to the resources whichever we want to access in the corporate network. So basically it is a kind of VPN connection which has uh, made between the on-primers and the AWS cloud to access the resources. So these are the three things we need to remember friends uh, whenever we work into the VPC because if we really not understand the concept, we will never be able to create a route uh, table, the route traffic between the different subnets. So we'll Define the purpose of creating a VPC. So we'll see the demo also that how the default route is created when we create a VPC and uh, how we really need to uh, attach the subnets and attach a internet gateway to our VPC to forward the traffic to the internet. So in this video, that's it only friends. Uh, if you really like this video, please hit the like button, do share it with your friends so that maximum people can understand uh, what is VPC. And uh, please do subscribe to our channel so that you can keep on getting the updates about our subsequent videos. Thank you friends, thank you for watching.